don't need to understand. Danger. Go! Okay, go. Welcome back, everyone. The Witcher dropped a new season three teaser, so we'll break it down. There was a big post credit scene at the end of Blood Origin meant to be a teaser for The Witcher season three. I'll explain what it means because there's a bunch of time travel now, which is part of the books that they're adapting in what books they are adapting for season three, like the next part of the story that they're doing for season three and all the changes that they introduced to the series backstory during Blood Origin and how that's going to affect the show's ending as well as their announced ending for Henry Cavill's character because it sounds like they're actually going to kill him off and there'll be a big twist that will explain why he looks like Liam Hemsworth during season four. As confusing as that all sounds, I will try to explain what's going on as well as why Henry Cavill left The Witcher because there's a bunch of stuff going on in his life too. Good things mostly, even though there were a bunch of left turns this past year that he probably didn't expect either. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up in January, like The Last of Us series on HBO, more trailers for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, The Mandalorian season three. There's a bunch of big stuff happening. Of course, I will do videos for everything. Careful for spoilers for The Witcher Blood Origin if you haven't watched those episodes, but during the series we see the origin of a couple key players later in the timeline who become a much bigger part later in The Witcher story of present day in the main show that we'll see during season 3. Primarily Airden of the Wild Hunt, the Mage Avalak, the White Frost, who now they're saying is an actual person, not just a force of nature coming to destroy the planet and every other planet eventually and Ciri's ability to time travel using her power in combination with the monoliths. As crazy as time travel sounds in the universe of The Witcher, time travel is a thing in the book. So like they are adapting that part of the books, although they have made some changes to the way the story plays out. One of the big twists of The Witcher universe from the books, the video games, is it isn't just a basic fantasy story, swords and sorcery. It's actually more sci-fantasy the way that Star Wars is sci-fantasy. It's just that you don't find out about that till the later books and the video games. We also saw the origin of the Witchers during Blood Origin, but we kind of already knew what Witchers were, what their role was in the story. All the biggest changes to the book story in the games, which come after the books in the timeline, are mostly to Ciri's story. So when I talk about the changes to the books and how that's going to affect the story, it's mostly about how it's going to affect Ciri's story towards the end. So for instance, during The Witcher 3, we see the end of Ciri's story, she faces the White Frost. I think some of the changes they made are in service of changes on the show that they'll make to the way that that goes down, the way she faces the White Frost. And we also have to address that they are making The Witcher 4 game, so like they will write more story after that, even though Ciri's ending in The Witcher 3 was originally meant to be a final ending, like the way they wrote her dealing with the White Frost. But the game was so successful, it earned so much money. It's an amazing game. If you haven't played it, you should check it out. They just did a big HD remaster and they're going to remaster the original games too. They would have been stupid to not try and write more story after that, but we won't find out what the new game is going to be like what that new story is for like another two or three years because it's going to take them a long time to release it. And by then, the Witcher TV story, the Witcher Netflix, will likely have ended its run given everything that's been going on with the show in real life. I think they originally planned on going five seasons based on the book material with like a little bit of video game stuff added in, maybe seven seasons with a bunch of video game story added in. But that was a couple years ago when they were saying this, and that was when I think they planned to have Henry Cavill playing Geralt the entire time. So I think all their plans for the show had just accelerated a bunch, and they're only going to make it about five seasons, maybe only four, depending on how season three goes. Going to be real hard to get people to watch that show after Henry Cavill leaves. And if it wasn't clear, season three is Henry Cavill's final season as the character. Like they've already filmed season three. He's in every episode. Then per the show's statement, per Netflix's statement, they're treating it more like a Doctor Who style twist recasting with Liam Hemsworth. And I think that time travel on the show might be a key to how that goes down based on their uses of the Doctor Who reference. Like Doctor Who is a time travel show. Why would you reference Doctor Who if it wasn't going to be a time travel twist? And why would you make your season three teaser a time travel teaser if it weren't going to be a big part of season three? But in that Witcher season three post credit scene, Avalak uses the book of monoliths that he's stolen from Baylor to time travel back to the events of season one of the main show before Ciri had met Geralt before Emperor Mir had shown up her father Saxintra in a bid to try and recapture her. 
So Avalok isn't meant to be really evil the same way that a lot of the other characters seem like they're evil, like Emperor Mir, the White Frost villain, Aerodin, the Wild Hunt. But to be fair, there is no real main villain on The Witcher. Like the White Frost is technically meant to be like the biggest villain. But everyone on the show is meant to be low grade, kind of a terrible person. So it's like a bunch of terrible people trying to do what they think is right, all going up against each other with differing opinions on things. So you have Ciri stuck in the middle. She's this ultra powerful being who isn't totally capable of defending herself yet. Geralt who's trying to help her survive. And then all these other factions that just want her for their own reasons. Avalak, for example, is one of those different factions. Her father, Emperor Mir, wants to use her power to help conquer the rest of the continent because he's been doing that for the past couple of years in the background of the show, like he's slowly been conquering all the other realms. Vilgefortz, who's also one of the antagonists, wants her power to have another child to fulfill this big prophecy that will give birth to an even more powerful child that he can control. Airden and the Wild Hunt want her so that they can open as many gates as they want between worlds, conquering them across time and space because he's basically stranded on this other arid world and they need her power to open the gates again so that he can travel between worlds. There are space unicorns in the universe of the Witcher that can open gates the way that Ciri does, but Airden across time, across the hundreds and hundreds of years up to present day, has wound up killing all them off, using them to travel between worlds. So that's why he needs Ciri now, because there are no more space unicorns for him to kill. We'll see how the show addresses that. And it seems like the White Frost villain, at least the way they change things during the Blood Origin series, is manipulating everyone, like even manipulating Airden the Wild Hunt, because they want more chaos magic. Like the whole idea is they just absorb magic from other powerful beings. And I think part of the idea is that the arid world, this other world that Airden is stranded on, used to be green and lush, but this other person absorbed all the power there and turned it into an arid world. And now she's going to come to the main world and do the same thing to it. And that's going to be the fulfillment of Ithlene's ultimate prophecy, the prophecy about her defeating the White Frost that you see in the books and the games, which is where we get to a bunch of our changes. I think part of the idea is that they wanted Ciri to have a fight at the end of the show, like whatever the final season is, with the White Frost defeating it, but her fighting an actual person instead of just like fighting a giant white cloud of winter. Because in the books and the games, the way they personify the White Frost is more like a force of nature, like there's no actual consciousness to it. The way the TV show is setting it up, it might wind up being an actual person who's just another time traveler pretending to be someone else. Like, why does the White Frost speak with a Scottish accent in the exact same language that Airden and all the other elven characters can understand if it's not another elven character from their race that's been time traveling? Avlak also wants Ciri, but his stance on her changes throughout his story. Like, he seems like kind of an antagonist later on, but he actually winds up helping her defeat the White Frost. Where we see him here staring at her, he's at the beginning of his story, he's a little more naive about things. You have to imagine a couple hundred years later, he'll be a little bit more bitter about all this stuff. The Witcher Season 3 Episode 1 is titled Sherwood. It's an ancient elven palace in this area of forest that's sacred to the elves that was this big fortress to them about 200 years ago before it was destroyed by humans. It means that during Episode 1, Geralt and Ciri are going to be riding through it like they were in the Blood of Elves book. And Blood of Elves is the book that they're largely adapting for the story of Season 3, like I said, with some changes. The title Blood of Elves is also a reference to Ciri's Elder Blood because it is elven blood. It started with the elves. She's part elf. The title is also a reference to the dying of the elves, the fate of the elves, losing their battle, fighting with Emperor Mir, the other humans in the continent. They're slowly dying out, and that was part of the Jaskier and the mini driver scenes during Blood Origin. She said that she wanted him to recite the tale of the Seven, the origin of the Elder Blood, the Wild Hunt, the White Frost, the Order of Witchers, in order to inspire the elves. And within the elves, you have a group of them that wants to live peacefully and leave the humans alone and just kind of continue living out their lives, slowly dying out. And then another group of them that's more militant and wants to kill all the humans. When he goes back at the end of Blood Origin is saved from the Temerians, the elves probably eventually take him back to this area near the woods near the Sherwood, which might be where he runs into Geralt again in present day. During season three, she's still trained to be a witcher. Not much time has gone by, but she's also been training in her magecraft, learning to use her magic powers through elder blood. Like she started to open gates at the end of season two. She'll continue to learn more about that, which is where I think we get to the idea of her using the gates to time travel. We'll learn more about Vilgefortz working with Emperor Mir, even though both of them have their own agendas for wanting Ciri. Eventually, Geralt helps Ciri to become powerful enough to protect herself and make her own decisions about what she wants to do and be less of a pawn to these other factions. And the way they tease this time travel twist and Henry Cavill having a heroic going out at the end of the show, like we'll give him a hero's ending, makes it sound like something crazy is going to happen. And she'll use her power to time travel at the end of season three, either on purpose or on accident. 
And that might be how they explain Henry Cavill looking like Liam Hemsworth, but being the same character. Like she might just see Geralt earlier in his timeline, even though in real life, Liam Hemsworth is only about seven years younger than Henry Cavill, but because he's way less swole, it is a lot easier to pass him off as the much younger version of Geralt earlier in his timeline. And that might be why they used Doctor Who when they were trying to explain the recasting. There is the whole Doctor Who regeneration twist, like that is how actors on Doctor Who change with the character being the same, but I think it's harder to explain Geralt looking completely different just because he's almost destroyed and Siri magically heals him with her power, but in doing so changes his appearance. Somehow that feels even more ridiculous than Siri just time traveling and seeing a younger version of Geralt. Let me know in the comments though, how do you think they're going to explain the recasting? Because the showrunner did say during season three, they give Geralt the very heroic ending, making it sound like he either dies trying to protect her or something terrible happens to him, setting up the need for Ciri to use her power. And when she sees him again, she's either changed him or she's traveled back in time and it's younger Geralt from before he died. But I think part of the reason why he left has something to do with his original plans for what was going to happen with Superman, the Superman movies that he thought that he was going to be making. Because remember, they revealed that he had actually talked about leaving the show as early as season two. So it had been in the works for a while. Amazon just announced they picked up his Warhammer series that he's going to be producing and starring in. So it sounds like up to about October of this year, he thought that he was going to be much busier playing a version of Superman in the movies, the DC movies, and doing this Warhammer TV series. Then by November, they hire James Gunn and he wants to do a complete reboot of DC movies and Henry Cavill is out. So even though it does suck that he's not going to play Superman anymore, I'm sure the Warhammer series that he does is going to look really cool. I've already done a big trailer video for it because he released this big teaser and tried to explain exactly how it's going to play out because it'll be Warhammer TV series and Warhammer movies. Everyone click here for his Warhammer trailer video and click here to learn about Ben Affleck coming back to play another character at Marvel. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.